Ronnie McPartland, born in Drumshambo, County Leitrim, the only pilot to be ejected from an aircraft in the Irish Air Corps. He was just 20 years old on the 5th of May, 1961. This is his story told by his brother, Noel McPartland. Yeah, that's an extract now from the Leitrim Observer of 2011. Uh, and that was sent t- to me by the Air Corps. So they did a story on Ronnie's uh, escapades while he was training to be a pilot. And he, he uh, was out over County Cavan um, in that in uh, 50 years before that, 1961, on manoeuvres with this gentleman here who passed away last year, a commandant from Kerry. And the plane got into difficulties over Mulla and Ronnie was ordered to bail out. And to do so, he had to just pull the lever. It was one of these Martin Baker ejector seats, which has actually saved a lot of lives over the years. And he let his parachute open, thankfully, and he landed in a bog in Cavan. And he headed, picked up all his paraphernalia and headed for the nearest house. And he went in and there were two farmers in there having a cup of tea. And it was mid-morning. And they saw this man coming in with all this stuff on him. And as it happened, it was the same period that John Glenn went up in space. And they may well have thought this guy was a spaceman. (laughs) So he asked where they were and where he was. And they said, well, you're in County Cavan or you could be in County Mead. And they got into a debate themselves. But they were kind of looking sideways at this thing that they were talking to. So eventually he uh, found out where he was, he was in Mulla, and had a car outside and he asked whether they run him into Mulla. And they said, oh, yes, they couldn't, no, they they really couldn't run him into Mulla, it would be, they hadn't time. So he set off on his own, but within minutes, your man followed him in the car and put him into the car and drove him into Mulla. And on the way into Mulla, they met a huge crowd of people coming out with a local sergeant who had seen all this activity that seen the plane and they had seen then this other thing they thought was the plane crashing but it was actually him coming out and landing safely and he landed in the bog and eventually the sergeant took over then and, and rang um, well I'd say he probably rang not Bad Donald, he rang uh, Gormanston and Gormanston sent a car down for him, brought him back and he had to fly a plane from Gormanston back to Bad Donald but he survived it. And he went on then to serve over 30 years with Aer Lingus. And he was a captain with Aer Lingus for that length of time. Would he have been kitted out in a uniform oh, and he a would, helmet? And he'd have all his uniform and he'd have, the, he'd have the parachute bit that he had with him round about him. He was a far, an alien as far as they were concerned. And he looked every looked a part of it. But he managed to talk them into... Uh, that what happened? He told them what happened and showed me some of the Irish Air Corps. Now whether that meant anything to them, I don't know. But eventually, he, uh, one of them, got the better of his curiosity and says, "I'll run you into your mother." Yeah. And that's the, that's the reference that you you got, or who was it got it? And you were doing a program, and somebody mentioned about you never mentioned about the man that landed here years ago well, that was the incident and that was in September 19 that was in oh it wasn't September it was in April I think 1961 and it coincided with John then going up in space yeah so that's his claim to fame it's a great and, story and that's actually the Martin Baker ejector seat now from that he was made an honorary member of the Martin Baker ejector uh, Martin Baker company and he was fated in a big uh, dinner in London because he was one of the few at the time that had, had landed safely. And I suppose we should add that he was the first ever Irish first pilot. First and only one. Thank God it has never happened since. But that then, that picture was taken in 2011 to commemorate the 50th anniversary and that's him sitting in a, a similar plane Yeah. in, um, in Bad Longwell. And it's and this was the man. Now the man actually this is very another story to that. This captain, uh, oh God, I'm, my eyesight is. Uh, Jer- Jeremiah you. O'Connor. I was sitting when I was working with Lairds. I used to spend a lot of time back and forth to the states, 
and I was coming back and I remember sitting in the waiting room in the Kennedy Airport and I was sitting beside this gentleman and he said to me, where are you heading for? So I told him, where are you from? I told him and he says, uh, are you from Drumshambo? I said, yes. Are you waiting to Ronnie McPartland? I said, I'm, his, I'm actually his brother. Well, he said, I'm the man that was flying the plane that day. Oh, yeah. And that was now back probably 1988 or so. Yeah. That, that happened. A lovely man, but he only passed away last year at 95. Oh, Lord of mercy. So that's, that's the yeah. story of, of that famous. But then there was another story then prior to that. He was on duty, he used to do duty then in Baldonnell on certain days. But a, f a friend of his um, was going out to do, um, going out to uh, manoeuvres, two of them, you see, practice. And the friend was from Athlone. And they flew over from Shambo here first. And there was a fair day in town. <laughs> and the buzz, now the, pe the the stories afterwards were just unbelievable. They said that they nearly took the top off the northern bank. Yeah. They weren't quite that low, but I knew it. As it turned out, there was a fair day in town and the place was crammed with cattle. And the cattle went wild and then people in the pub came running out. Total pandemonium. And the plane took off anyway. And they went down to White Lone then where your man came from and did something similar. But the incident here then was reported to RTE that there was an unidentified plane in <laughs> flying over from Shambo and uh, they rang, the, the papers rang Baldonald and Ronnie answered the phone and he said he wasn't aware of any plane over from Shambo this morning you see but anyway the whole thing came out and they were suspended for a month for adventurous flying but they got away, it did, had nothing to do with their career afterwards you yeah. know yeah Hello. and just to touch on another story uh, once when we talked uh, when Matt Busby visited from oh, Shambo yes. and did he refueled I think uh, yeah, you Matt, said Matt was on his way to uh, Ballina they did a lot of work with uh, merchandising stuff with a company called Mako who used to make flags and all kinds of stuff and they had a contract with Man United so he took a ch uh, helicopter from Dublin and he had to refuel. So he refueled, you know where the food hub is now? Yeah. Just up there, he landed there and Raymond Laird met him and uh, I think I showed you the picture today. You did, yeah. The picture yeah. is down here, there was Raymond Laird, there was Pat McGrath who was a uh, director of Man United and there was Pat Kramer, who, or Pat Crerand who was a famous footballer. See them here. Uh, and you can see the helicopter. Yeah, the, the, and the refuel there, and then they went on to Ballina. But there were all the kids, now I wasn't there that day, but I know that all the kids in the town were up. What, looking at this, that was 1970, 1970, 71. Yeah. So no, that, that's, <laughs> that was all the it's a great, aviation stories from Drumshambo, you it's know. It's a great photograph. This is a good photograph. I got it touched up actually. I got it from uh, I got it from a guy in Dublin, France, uh, Robert Noonan, whose father used to be a sergeant here. And in fact, there was an inquiry that time over the incident with Ronald flying over the Drumshambo and causing all this havoc. And Gard Noonan, God rest him, was the man of the barracks on the air corps sent down inspectors the next week to check out the story about this, you see. <laughs> and, uh, I went into Tom in the barracks anyway and they said, uh, you had a lot of excitement here last week. Oh, jeez, well, not that I heard, says Tom. Why? Well, there was a plane came down here very low. Well, jeez, I didn't hear anything about it, he says. Of course, he had heard about it, but he was talking to me father. So he just said nothing. But anyway, they put the story together and, as I said earlier, the boys didn't suffer in their careers afterwards. They both went on to be captains and Erlingus. And I'm looking down here on the floor and I see another article going back to 1961. I think that last might be loose. Yeah, it is. It's a bit, that, that actually was the day after he bailed out of the plane. Yeah. 
and that was the Evening Press, Friday, May the 5th, 1961. And it says, Officer saves plane and spin as cadet bailed out. The officer being Jeremiah O'Connor. And it says, a 20-year-old Army Air Corps trainee pilot made history for his unit today when he parachuted safely at 10,000 feet after a jet training plane had dropped 20,000 feet while practicing spins over County Cavan. Uh, he was the first ever member of the Corps to, t- to bail out. He was Cadet Ronnie McPartland, a native of Drumshamba, who was being trained by Commandant J.B. O'Connor of Temple Villas, Turnure, a native of Sneem County Kerry, and one of the Air Corps' most experienced pilots. When Commandant O'Connor saw that recovery from the spin was difficult, he decided that his pupil should bail out and the ejector equipment he had to use. He then had a terrific struggle to bring the plane under control, but did so. After seeing his young pilot had landed safely, he radioed Baldonnell and an army car was sent to pick up the young cadet. In the meantime, the acrobatics of the plane and the ejection of one of the occupants had created considerable excitement at Mulla and a number of farmers and workers headed on bicycles in the direction of the chute as it came down. Cadet McPartan landed on a commons about four miles from the town and immediately began a search for the ejector equipment and the canopy which had come down somewhere in the area. He was unhurt and notified his commanding officer at Baldonnell where Commandant O'Connor had safely landed. The search for the ejector seat and the canopy was carried out over a wide area with assistance from the Army Air Corps. A spokesman at Baldonnell said that the training and recovery from spins was part of the training for young officers. The fact that the plane had dropped from 30,000 feet to 10 and that the pilot had instructed the trainee to bail out suggested that he had difficulty in recovering. He paid a tribute to the experience and skill of the jet instructor. Commandant O'Connor, who is married with two children, Helen and Patricia, has 21 years of service in the Air Corps, which he entered as a cadet. He was stationed originally at Baldonnell and subsequently at Rhinana, which is now Shannon Airport, of course, before being transferred to Gormanston. He came back to Baldonnell about seven years ago. He piloted the first Air Corps vampire jet plane to this country and has been given instruction on the in the aircraft to cadets at Baldonnell. He did special training in 1953-54 with the British Air Force. A dramatic account of the bailout was given by Commandant O'Connor at Baldonnell. He told how he had set off from the airbase this morning at 10.45 with a sortie of three vampire jets and headed for Cavan. It was a routine training uh, exercise and we were at 30,000 feet when we got into a spin. We were over King's Court area and after about two or three turns I tried to pull her out. The plane f- failed to respond to the recovery and we were losing weight or height at 5,000 feet a minute. We had dropped to 10 and this is the height regarded in the Book of Rules as critical. I released the canopy and I instructed the cadet to bail out. Immediately, I felt that the plane could be pulled out of the spin due to the release of the canopy. I managed to get her together, to get to get her together out of it, even though I should have bailed out according to the book. It's a great account, but so it is. That was Noel. the account. Now, the next day of the that was the fifth of May, nineteen sixty-one. The Evening Press. So until next time, from myself, Mike Mulvihill, I'd like to thank you for listening to this. A reminder to follow my Twitter page at Mike's Powerplay for further updates on documentaries that I'm working on.